Good morning. Last week, you saw me make this mold, and it's to make this little guy right here. And uh, now we got to make 150 of these. So today, we're going to mix the resin to the right color. We're going to pour a lot of cap resin in a lot of cavities. We're going to take them out. We're going to trim them. We're going to let's see what do we got to do? We got to trim them. We got to machine the bases on them. We got to drill holes in them. We got to sand them. So you'll see all that going on today, and I hope you stick around, and I hope you have a good time. Okay, I got my bucket of resin, and uh, this is the B side, so that means we got to shake it. Now, you probably are not buying resin in big, in you know, forty-pound lots, but we're pouring in production, so this is the most economical way for us to do it. That's why we do it. But you got to shake the B side, and that means. And you really want to thoroughly get it mixed. There are solids, or at least there are components in the B side that settle out. Okay, I'm going to call that mixed. And now we can go on to dispensing, and that's a whole nother deal. Let's go ahead, see if we can't fill this jug up. See if we can't fill this jug with three and three quarter pounds. Got a scale, got paper towel in case I have a disaster. <laughs> Let's see, this could be go horribly wrong or I'll do it you know, perfectly and look like a pro. Okay, here we go. Let's see, is this gonna come flowing out of here? I'm gonna be ready for it. All right, here we come. All right, I am dispensing. Very nice, see how gentle that is? See how easy that is? Working like a champ. Now, I don't want to dispense too much, or I'll have to pour it back. So I'm just going to get a sense of how much I've put in here. Just letting it flow in. See, by, t by rolling the bucket, you're lowering the nozzle, and therefore more stuff's coming out. So that's how you control it. All right, I'm going to roll it back up. Okay, wipe so I don't have drips. Secure the bucket so I don't have a disaster because disasters can happen at any moment. Okay, let's put this on here and see what we come to. Oh, look at me, look at me. Now we've come to the skills portion of the program. <laughs> this, is, this is where the pressure is on me. Uh, the deal is, I got this jug of resin, as you just saw me fill, and this is the little boy that we're matching right here. This little guy. So it's this color that I have to match right here. You would just say, well, this is simple. You know, urethane resin, no big deal, right? You just take your blue and you take, you take your blue and you take your yellow, you mix it just right, you get it all pretty, it looks like that, you're done. Except that's not how it works. The problem is I'm gonna have to mix a much darker blue, a much darker blue green in the jug than what it's done because it lightens. You've seen that in the past if we looked at previous videos. So this is really an experience and skills type of job where I've mixed a lot of resin in my life. <laughs> I gotta hope today that I will succeed in mixing this resin because if, if, I, if I pass, if I go too dark, I'm screwed. All I can do is add more resin into the bucket and I don't want to mix up a lot of this color resin. I wanna mix up just the right amount of this amount of color. So that's our goal for today. Basically, I'm gonna make a really concentrated little batch of each color. And then I'm gonna add that slowly into the jug. So this is gonna be my blue. Uh, let's get some paper towel on the job because I hate handling these, hate handling these dye bottles without paper on my hands. And why? Because you get the dye on your hands. See that? Ugh. This dye is miserable to work with because it gets all over everything and it's freaking powerful. It's freakishly, it's freakishly powerful stuff. I mean, you know, just a snort like that is that much. We'll turn this jar of resin bright blue. And this is a pastel color. We don't want to go past it. It'd be super easy to make this into a dark blue green. I don't want that to happen to me. So I'm going to sneak up on the contents of this jug. I can tell you that. This is the kind of stuff, if you're in production, if you're doing this for money, you have to factor things like this into your price. These are the hours that, you know, you think, well, it takes me so much to cast them and do all this stuff. Yeah, but it's stuff like this that you have to factor in to the production that really matters. 
Okay, mix the blue, now let's go on and mix the yellow. And let's get a nice wazoo of yellow. Okay, pour the yellow in. This yellow, we don't want a lot of yellow. This is the dramatic part. I'm gonna put a little in here. And I'm gonna stir it. And you can see how little blue that took to get to that color. Okay, it's really light, so it's gonna want more. I know that it's gonna need more because it's gonna dry a lot lighter. So let's keep sneaking. I also do hate the mess of this, so I keep paper, lots of paper on hand to keep swiping the cups. So I keep my mess under control. Keep stirring, keep stirring. Okay, now it's nice and blue. I know that it's still too light, but I'm gonna add just a touch of yellow. Not much. Gonna be judicious. I do not wanna turn, I want this to be sea foam, this color, which is a lot of white, which is the color of the resin. And uh, it's only slightly, oh yeah, 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 that's about the right ratio too. Boy, you don't want a heck of a lot more. All right, it is now gonna be time for our first measure test. And uh, that means I'm gonna weigh out a tiny amount of each one and test it and see what happens. It's about two and a half hours later. <laughs> that was a little bit uh, tedious, but you can see here all of my color steps. I was pretty, I snuck up pretty slowly in the beginning. I actually seemed like I was mixing a lot of extra, but when you're mixing a big jug like this, wait a minute, first of all, just stop for a second. Look at the color in the jug. Look at the color of the guy. See what I mean when I tell you that it's like an art form? <laughs> this is, it's not easy. It's not the same color. It's radically different to, to get close. I snuck up on it until I got to this one here and uh, that's where I felt like I was really, really close. So it's time, it's really kind of hard to tell, frankly. It's close, but it's hard to tell. So I poured one. So uh, here we go. Let's see what it looks like. I will take it apart and we'll see how close. I wouldn't mind being a little dark. If I'm dark, I'm all right. If I'm too light, I'll have to throw more stuff in there. We'll just have to see where I'm at. But I'm pretty close. Oh yeah, I'm still a hair light, just a hair light. And I don't wanna be light. I don't wanna be light. I wanna be, if anything, I wanna be just a hair darker. So, okay, so let's throw in one more and give it another shot. Okay, so we're pretty close. So let's see, this is the third of the, this is the third of the color tests and we will see where I've actually made a casting and uh, just keep putting a little bit more stuff in there every time. Should be pretty close now. Yeah, it's pretty close. It's close enough. I would call that a government job. <laughs> Look at that. Here's our sample boy, and here's our, uh, whatchamacallit boy, the copy. Well, I think we've got the color pretty knocked, and let's just do a test batch and see what they look like. All right, so let's pour us up a batch of these, and we'll start by dispensing out some of the B, some of the B res, and I don't like spillage on the rim of the jug, so let's wipe it up. So I just poured out a batch into this cup, because that's the cup we're gonna dispense in. And we'll do the same exact thing with the A. Okay, so that should be enough A. Beautiful, all right, head over to the scale. Now we know uh, from uh, having tested things out that we need 170 grams to pour a batch of these. So that's what we're gonna weigh out. So I gotta tear the scale, which is, means to balance the scale for the cup. And weirdly, you would think that every paper cup in, the, in a bag of paper cups would weigh the same, but they, they just don't. They just have slight variations. So I always make sure I'm right on. My scale is balanced. And uh, so now I'm gonna use the old dump method. So we always start with the A side, set it to 60. We wanna get to 85, but if I sneak up, it'll take too long. So I'm just gonna dump it to 60. There it went, set it to 70. There's 70. And 
and there's a little more than 80. 85, the scale is set to 85, and away we go. And we're perfect, perfect at 85. Okay, so that's that, that's the A side, and let's pour the B side, same thing. We'll set the scale to, we need to go to 170, so let's be safe and set it to 150. And let's just dump. Okay, that's 150, 160. See, I sneak up in the last few grams, and I'm going to be a little bit over because there's dye in the B side. And the dye weighs a little bit, doesn't weigh a lot, but there you go, 170. No time for talking. We have got to stir, stir, stir because... Uh, we have to pour quick. We've got eight cavities to pour and not a lot of time to do it. Let's go back over to where they are. Notice I made a double stirring stick out of two popsicle sticks. Works like a champion. Now I'm going to start pouring before this gets warm. So I think they're well mixed. Let's go. Pour about half because these things are going to require tipping because I know from experience that this thing these kids want to catch a bubble in their chins, so I want to get there quick. Okay, so let's tip like that. Stand them on their head, basically, is what I'm doing. And that should shake out the bubble that's caught down in that chin. And now let's fill them. Quick, 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 quick. Go, go, go. Because I'm pouring down a leg, they have nice big pour spouts. So that makes it easy and quick to pour them. I want this topped, baby, top. I want these topped off, maxed out, so that they're, they're not going to be underfilled. I want these things filled up right, baby. Okay, good. Nice. Let's get this thing in the tank. In the tank she goes. Close the out valve. Put in the lid. And we're ready to go. And um, pretty soon the compressor is going to kick on. Go to the compressor would kick on. Let's see what the, uh, what the old witness cup has to tell us. Oh, yeah. Hard as a rock. Beautiful. Close the, close the inlet valve. That that's, shuts the compressor off from the tank. Let the air out. Beautiful. And once the pressure goes out of the tank, then we'll be able to open the door. Can't open the door with the pressure is holding the door closed, so uh, you're never going to get that door open. No amount of pushing. We'll do that. There we go. All right, beautiful. All right, first batch. Let's take it over there. Pull this thing apart. Yada da. Let's take a look. Very exciting. Get these bands off. If I take the bands off carefully, they're quicker to put on the next batch. So I'm a little bit careful. All right, don't get them tangled up. All right, very exciting. Let's see what's gonna, what we got here to look at. Let's see how they look. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at those. Okay. Admire the part. Oh, dear me goodness. Look at that. Look at that. See that little tiny bit of flash? That's my partying line. Wow. Now that was a big problem, huh? Beautiful. Really, very nice. Okay. Let's see. Let's hope for the best. Let's put them here so we can see them as they pile up. We only have 150 of these to do. And they all have to come out looking sweet. Looking sweet. Three's good. And they all came out just looking fine. Now what I like to do, because it's easier, is you see that little vent, little vent deal on there? We gotta get that out of there. And it's easier to do it now 
than it will ever be again. I can just take an X-Acto and just cleanly and rapidly nick it off. And if I wait 24 hours, those things will be a lot harder to cut off and they'll leave a little like cut mark. They won't cut clean like they're doing now. So I, I, I like to take them out of the molds and trim the sprues immediately. They're hard, but see, they're not rock hard. Notice, look at that. Yeah, you can bend that. See, you can bend that sprue. That's, they're hard. They're not going to, you know, degas or anything weird on me. They're not going to, like, blow bubbles or something. If there's any trapped air inside of them, the bubbles won't re expand at this point. But they're super easy to cut. You only want to spend a couple of seconds on each one. You don't want to spend all day trimming sprues, that's for sure. Seconds mount up on production jobs. In factories, they spend, they spend an inordinate amount of time doing nothing but shaving seconds off each operation or even fractions of a second off each operation because at the end of a process, by the time you're all done with your manufacturing run, seconds add up to minutes and minutes add up to hours and that adds up to real money. And I maintain that even if you're a hobbyist, even if you're you know, doing this for fun, it's still fun to minimize the like drudgery labor, you know? You don't need drudgery in your life. None of us need drudgery in our lives, all right? These look great, boy. They are gonna be so easy to clean the flash off. Oh yeah, absolutely fantastic. When the castings come out of the mold, they're not flat. The bottoms are not flat. They kind of, they kind of shrink. They kind of cupped in like that. And we want them to be nice and flat like that. Nice and smooth and flat. This is my beautiful little homemade router setup. <laughs> Got this jig, which I was also uh, just made, special built for this job. And it just uh, holds, these, holds those things in place and uh, works like a champ. They stay right in there. Very nice, works great. And away we go. Let's cut a few. This is just the easiest and simplest way I've ever found to machine the bases of these little pieces flat. It's so much faster than trying to do it by hand. And it, while it is a bit of a pain to build the jig, uh, the return on investment and the time, it's a no-brainer. This is the fast, simple, accurate way to do it. It works every time. Got my beautiful 1973 Sears Craftsman lathe all set up. Put a flap wheel on it, one of these kind of a flatter wheels. They used to be called flatter wheels. Uh, but it's just basically a, a soft sanding wheel. Works great for this job, so let's get going on that. Take off all the little dingleberries. It will smooth out the edge around the base. There's a nice job of that. That's kind of a sharp edge left by the router. And we just keep going and get them done, one after the other, just like that. Come out great. All right, let's head on over to the drill press and I have a little jig set up. So let's fire up the drill. And uh, the whole point of that jig is that it just holds the piece in place. Drilled out the back of his head. Do that again. One more time. And that is the final machining step on these. Uh, the only thing left to do is to paint them and string them and pack them and ship them. All right. Last pour of the day, and uh, it's been a pretty good day. I made a, <laughs> I made a pretty good, I made a pretty good number uh, of castings, so we're well on our way. I'm not going to make you sit through while I cast out 150 of these things. I'm just, I'm, I'm too nice a person for that. Uh, you don't need to see me make any more than you've seen. You can just trust me that I'm going to make 150 of them. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, hit that like button. Thanks for subscribing. I love you all, all my subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps me out. And don't forget, I'm still looking for projects. So if you think you have an interesting mold project, molding and casting project, that you're not sure how, you'd, how to do it or you want some help or you just think it'd be fun to watch me do it here on the channel, 
hit me up down below in the comments. Uh, likewise, if you have any questions or comments, I always look forward to hearing from you. Don't be shy. Come out of there. I, I ought to. Some, some of them make you work. It's because I overpour and I leave a nice big thick bottom so I can machine it off over there. All right. We're done for the day. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.